Hi, this is Deborah Atkinson, host of Flipping 50 TV, the Flipping 50 podcast, and the author of You Still Got It, Girl. We've got to talk about this issue of fatigue and what it really means. Here's the deal. So there's a lot of confusion about reaching fatigue during exercise. There are two ways to think about it. So on one hand, you think about getting tired reaching fatigue, getting pooped before you left, okay? Then, on the other side, there's what really counts. When we're talking about fatigue, that is metabolism boosting, body changing fatigue that you need to reach during exercise, what we're talking about is your muscle. We need you to reach fatigue, which is temporary failure. That means you really couldn't do another one well with good form. Now there's a big difference between some of the activities that a lot of us are doing right now. So doing high intensity intervals. Now don't get me wrong, I do intervals too. But we have to be really careful when we're using strength training as a part of those intervals. Doing what I call and used to do some of myself boot camp types of exercises. What we find is that for females, particularly over 50, who lose 5 or 0.5, half a pound of muscle every year. That's on average. That means some of us lose more than that, some of us lose less because none of us are actually average. But starting at the age of 30, if we're losing half a pound of muscle on average a year, by the time we get to 50, how much is that? Are you doing the math? It's not good. That's unless you've been resistance training to fatigue. So here's the key. You need to reach fatigue whether you go with heavy weights. And yes, I do believe that heavy weights edge out light weights. But if you have joint issues or you simply have a fear of getting injured, and you're afraid that if you go too heavy, you will be injured, chances are the thought process that you have may result in that actually happening. So if you need to err on the conservative side, go for it. I'm all for that. Placebo effect is everything. And if you believe you might get hurt going heavier, it may be very true. So whether it's light or it's heavy, the key is you have to reach fatigue. That means you or I, when we're lifting weights, we can't just choose an arbitrary number and say, I'm going to do 15 of these repetitions. What you need to do is really experiment with your weights so that if you're doing a bicep curl, for instance, you have to choose a weight that will fatigue you at about 15 repetitions. Or if you're not fatigued, you have to keep going until it is really the last one that you can lift or you start to cheat. Did you see what I just did? So if I were doing a bicep curl with good form, I'd be here. With poor form, I'd start to cheat. Something else would start to fire and you'll feel that with a good awareness. You'll also see it. If you do it in front of a mirror, very helpful. And if you're not sure what is good form, that's when you want to use a trainer to watch, make sure somebody's with you, not allowing you to cheat. That most of the time, you're gonna to start to pick up on that right away. You can tell when the right muscles are working and you can tell when other ones begin to kick in. Fatigue is that point where you cannot do another one with good form without including other muscle groups. If you reach that, you will boost your metabolism because what happens during the recovery period between the workout that you did and reach fatigue and the next one that you do is the muscles compensate and they actually hyper compensate, meaning they don't just recover to the same strength they had before this workout, they recover more. And that's the point where you gain lean muscle tissue that helps you boost your metabolism. What you wanna be thinking is, if you choose a five pound weight or you choose a 10 pound weight, you've got to do a lot more repetitions with the five than you do with the 10. Don't set in your head 15 repetitions and then I'm done. You have to go by fatigue. 
So driving that point home again and again and again, and I know it's redundant, but the point is we're not really getting it. When we go to boot camp, we get tired quickly and we often move too fast during the repetitions to really fatigue the muscle. We're fatiguing things all over. So here's the other thing to keep in mind about fatigue. Functional kinds of movement often encourage you to be in a position where a lot of your body is on. The muscles are contracting to hold you in position. One example would be lying with your head and your shoulders on a ball with your legs underneath your hips, pushing your hips to the ceiling, doing a chest press. So you're using your core, you're using your glutes, all that to stabilize before you even do your chest press. Now a lot of people will say that's better. Here's why, if you are a female who's 50 or older, that means 60, 70, or 80, that may not be the best way to actually fatigue this specific muscle group. The chest press is about your pectoral muscles and it's gonna hit your biceps or your triceps in the back of your arm as well. You wanna fatigue those major muscle groups, not the whole package if you really wanna boost your metabolism. Because post-exercise, if you hit major muscles, like the chest or the back or the glutes, the hamstrings in the back of the leg, the quadriceps in the front, those muscles are big metabolism boosters. They're the ones that need to fatigue. And if you're doing an exercise like a plank, the whole body is on, and yes, it's a great exercise. And I'm not saying don't do them, but make sure that if your highest priority is weight loss, you wanna boost metabolism, that means we wanna hold your lean tissue. And so we can gain more of it even to boost your metabolism and that will help you burn more fat all day, every day. As opposed to just getting tired, moving quickly, burning more calories during that half hour that you might be exercising. Spend more of your time doing that muscle fatiguing type of thing and spend a little bit less of your time but do do some of those functional workouts because they're excellent for core and they're excellent for helping you stabilize and do things like moving furniture, picking up pets, picking up children and doing a lot of the daily activities of life or even the sporadic things that we need to do like putting your bicycle on the back of your car so that you can go for a bike ride or putting your stand-up pedal board on the top of your roof. We need those kinds of functional exercises, but if you wanna look leaner, be smaller, you want to reach fatigue in major muscle groups. So do some strength training, even 10 or 20 minutes a week focusing on major muscle groups is about all it takes and it's not about the time that's just an example so it's about fatigue reach fatigue and you will be successful provided you give yourself enough rest and recovery in between drop your questions down below because this is a really controversial issue and I know it can be confusing with so much information out there but sort out what you're reading Make sure it's done for women. Make sure it's done for women who are, say, 40 to 60 or older, who have changing metabolism and who have been losing muscle mass for at least 20 years. Because if it's not research or information that's been specifically applied to you and I, it's hard to say, how do I apply that to me and to my workout? So. Let me know what your questions are and I'll see you on the flip side.